solutions to the things that you're facing in your everyday life as we kind of scale and grow into what the new normal is. My name is Lamar Tyler. I'm the creator and founder of Traffic, Sales, and Profit. We help entrepreneurs drive more traffic, convert more sales, and grow the amount of profit in their business. I'm also the co-founder, along with my wife, Ronnie, of BlackAndMarriedWithKids.com, the world's largest African-American marriage and parenting site. Um, right, So you may be viewing this on BlackAndMarriedWithKids.com. You might be viewing it on Traffic, Sales, and Profit or one of our social platforms because we are simulcasting to multiple locations to get this information that we're talking about today out to as many people in our community as we possibly can. Now, you may be saying, like, like Lamar, what is this information that you're trying to get out and what is it that you're trying to do? Uh, we actually, right now, currently have a seven-point stimulus package. This is one piece of that. We're doing daily COVID-19 updates with Dr. Joffrey Mount Varner, an uh, ER doctor based in the Washington, D.C. area, who's coming to answer all of your questions about things that may be going on. We're providing you with free business resources, videos, guides, checklists to help you grow your business, right, and, and help you through the economic portion of what we're facing now. We have weekly business trainings, weekly life trainings like we're doing today just to help you with the new nuances of life, the new normal. We have a, a quick cash summit that we did to help entrepreneurs and business owners, or maybe even if you have a side hustle, trying to make that a main hustle, figure out how to get to quick cash. And we're doing weekly grocery store gift card giveaways and small business grants in the tune of $1,000 every week. And this week was the first week we'll actually be awarding those out. So we're excited to have you here. And I'm excited to get uh, started with today's conversation. So let me tell you who we have joining us in just a second. Uh, today we're joined by Dr. Anika Goodwin. She is a board certified ophthalmologist, visionary, telemedicine thought leader, speaker, author, and vision advocate. She is a co-founder and CEO of iEmergency MD Inc., an ocular telehealth company committed to improving access to eye physicians and ending preventable blindness. She is also the creator of Opulence MD Beauty, a beauty brand committed to providing safe and luxurious options for eye-related beauty products. We'll be talking about both of those, too. Dr. Nick is also passionate about vision and access to healthy, quality eye care. She goes above and beyond to put her patients in the position of co-captain of their eye and visual health. She believes that an educated patient is one who will work with the healthcare team to improve outcomes. During this pandemic, uh, she has also utilized her company, I Am Emergency MD, to provide care for all acute eye issues directly to the consumer so that you can avoid the need to visit acute care and emergency rooms where your exposure to COVID-19 is significantly higher. No insurance is necessary and care is available within all 50 states. We'll be talking about that as well. But please join me, guys, in welcoming to the conversation Dr. Anika Goodwin. Hey, Dr. Anika, how are you? Hey, Lamar. Thank you for having me. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. And I feel like this is such an important conversation. Like, like we've been having a bunch of important conversations. But as it pertains to our health, as me and you were talking about online, I definitely believe um, that there's a new normal. Um, things will shift after this, right? We're going to talk about that in just a second. But before we do, can you give them just uh, a little more background about who you are, about what you do, right? Besides uh, uh, being a board certified ophthalmologist, you're also a serial entrepreneur. Um, so let's kind of give a little bit more about who you are and then let's, let's jump into some of these topics. So I am, I'm an eye surgeon. So a lot of times people don't know the difference between optometrist, ophthalmologist. I'm the person who does your cataract surgery and your lip surgery. And I have always had a passion for vision. And one of the things that I noticed in just doing my job is that so many people don't know, know the importance of having good eye health and having eye exams. Many times I like to say that we value our vision because if you ask anyone could you imagine you losing your sight? Their answer is no, but people don't prioritize their vision. So if I ask someone, when's the last time you had an eye exam? Their usual answer is, I don't know. So I feel like half of my job is just helping people understand that the time to see me is not when you're having problems. The time to see me is when you want to, when you want to make sure that your vision is healthy and remains healthy. Um, so that is how I to see MD was born. I love medicine. I love taking care of patients, but I also love making sure that patients have access to the things they need. So out of that, I to see MD was born. I love it. I love it. I love it. And, and what you said is so true. You know, even in our, our own personal story, me and Ronnie, um, uh, you know, it was a time when, excuse me, Ronnie had a detached retina. I don't know if I ever told you the story or not. I'm sure I probably did. You did tell me. But, but it literally was like one day she woke up and was like, yeah, I can't see out of half of my eye. And... We were like, uh, what's up with that? That's not normal, right? We need to do something about that. But it, like you say, it's, it's one of those things you don't you don't really think about oftentimes. Like we've never really thought about it until we were boom faced with that situation. And then now what do we do? And just everything changed from that moment. Um, so I love it. I love it. So today we're here to talk about the ins and outs of telemedicine. 
So can we just, for people that may not be familiar with telemedicine, can you just give them like a, a, a I guess a layman's point of view about what telemedicine actually is? So telemedicine is the opportunity to see your provider using any sort of device you might have, whether it be a phone, it is a tablet, it is your desktop or, desktop or your laptop. It enables you to see them from wherever you are. So from the privacy of your own home, if you're on vacation, you're able to get to them that way. And so it is opening up access to medical providers and practitioners outside of the brick and mortar offices where you are accustomed to seeing them. Uh, with the advances in technology, we have been able to have seamless visits um, that are video visits. So just like we're having a conversation right now, Lamar, you can have a conversation with your doctor the exact same way. They're able to engage with you, ask you questions, and do some modified examination techniques that will allow them to diagnose your problems and prescribe if necessary and let you know what you need to do to get onto the road of good health. All right, but let me ask you this, because I'm sure um, telemedicine is something that's different than what most people are used to, right? Most people are used to going into the office, waiting in a waiting room, right? Like, you know, um, uh, interacting directly with the actual actual doctor. What has been, I guess, uh, leading up to now, right, before now, some of the objections that you've heard or some of the reasons people, like if people just jump right into it, start talking about patients. Um, you know, I could imagine... Um, some older patients specifically, right, probably saying, I don't know about this. Like, like what's, what's, what's some of the things you've seen and heard about reasons why, you know, people may have been a little standoffish to this in the past? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the first concerns is privacy. Um, people are like, if I'm just seeing the doctor just anywhere, we're not in this small little room with the door closed. How do I know that my information is, is secure? How do I know that the information I'm putting in before I see my doctor that I'm putting into the platform is secure? So security issues, HIPAA, privacy, all those things are one of the concerns. And I can tell you that in order for a platform to be approved to allow telemedicine visits, it goes through rigorous testing to be sure that the information that is exchanged between the patient and the provider is secure. Um, and so you, if you think about it, you've rarely heard of any breaches in any of these telemedicine platforms because they are held to an even higher standard than the doctor's offices. I often, I'm guilty of it. You can walk into a doctor's office. How often have you looked over behind the counter and seen someone's chart there? Technically, that could be a, a breach because someone could see that issues with telemedicine visits. And so the privacy concerns are really unfounded and you do not have to worry about your information being insecure at any point along the way. I think the second objection is that people are used to being touched by their physician. That touch is a part of the, what's special about the patient-physician relationship. And so some patients believe that if my doctor then I'm not able to get an accurate diagnosis. I'm not able to be treated appropriately. But I'll tell you, many times we know what's wrong with you before we ever touch you. We touch you to confirm what we already know. And that is because diagnostic skills really are founded on having a good ear and listening to what the patient is saying, because common things are common and they present in that fear of not being able to get good care and accurate diagnoses and treatment is also unfounded because your doctor has years of clinical experience and is able to listen to you say, modify exam techniques with things that you can help them do and get a really accurate diagnosis. All right, um, guys, if you are just joining us today, um, uh, we're joined by Dr. Anika Goodwin. We're having a great conversation here about um, telemedicine, right? Kind of the ins and outs for doctors and for patients as well. And um, what that kind of looks like across the board between um, you guys and between them as well. Um, so this is like a, a great conversation for us to have, for us to dive into. And I want to make sure everybody is good and paying attention as well. You don't have any questions about it. I already see a bunch, uh, a ton of questions kind of coming into the chat already. So we're going to jump into those in just a second. I also want you guys that are watching to make sure you tag a friend, um, tag a family member, right? If, if uh, you know, you have a loved one um, that maybe has been holding off on telemedicine or needs to know more about it, right? Because they need to talk to someone. They need to. Uh, um, you know, uh, be able to be in contact with their doctor or medical professional, this is a great opportunity to get them onto this actual call to have someone else relay the message that maybe you've been trying to do successfully or unsuccessfully in the past. All right, so uh, Dr. Anika, let me ask you uh, a few more questions as we kind of kind of go through because the chat is already popping. Um, well, let me go, let me, if you don't mind, let's go to a few questions and then we'll come back to my stuff. 
All right. Um, let me see one of the questions that we had. Um, and what's up? Shout out to uh, Andrea uh, Evans Esquire. I said, I love it. My doctor even emailed me through a secure portal, all records and communication in one place. Um, that is a very good one. Um, uh, Joanne said, are there certain fields that do better with telemedicine than others? Uh, Dr. Nika, um, I may not be, I don't think we can hear you. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to drop you off and add you right back and see if we can bring you right back in and see if we can get the audio going again. All right, guys, let me know if you can hear Dr. Nika down into the chat, please. Uh, all right, yeah, there we go. We'll, we'll drop you and then bring you kind of right back in and then see if we can solve it. All right, guys, let me give me one second to kind of do that. And then we will make it happen and bring her back on. While we are doing that and doing trying to transition, um, like I said, if you have any questions now, is the time to drop those questions below. Make sure you get what you need answered. And any comments, right? I want to know too, as we're going, have you guys um, used telemedicine, right? Have you already been doing it? And then if you're using it, were you using it prior to everything going on or is it something that you just started using now? Hey, Dr. Nika, you there? Okay. Yep. We can hear you. So let me bring you back in. Awesome. Okay. Yep. So, um, uh, Joanne had asked, are there some fields that lend better to telemedicine than others actually do? So thank you for that question. Perfect question. There are questions like uh, questions. There are specialties like psychiatry, like therapy that are perfect for telemedicine because those things basically are, are the, at the foundation, just dialogue. You're talking to someone just like we're having a conversation now. Um, but with technology, we have figured out ways that you can see your primary care doctor for your team visits, as well as for sick visits. Um, I am an ophthalmologist. We are able to now do especially acute eye exams and even comprehensive eye exams without you having to go physically into the office. And technology is creating more and more equipment that is allowing us to do more and more either from your home or from locations that are outside the doctor's offices, like vans in a Walmart parking lot and so on and so forth, we're able to get a good amount of data and examination there. So uh, the sky is the limit at this point. We are only our ability to be creative and to build the technology. I love it. Hey, here's another question that came in from Angela. Angela said, how were labs handled uh, with telemedicine? Labs, is, did I hear that question correctly? Yes. Yes. Yep. Your lab work. So we actually have companies now. We have companies now that go into your home and will collect your labs. The only thing that is required is the order from your doctor, which can be handled via telemedicine. The lab personnel will come to your home, draw your labs and take them to the lab where they will be um, uh, looked at there and your doctor will be giving the results. I will tell you that those kinds of services have been halted because of COVID. Um, many of these services are not allowing the personnel to go into other people's homes. So that part right now um, is not as available widely as it typically is. But in an ordinary situation, you don't you don't even have to leave your house to have labs done. All right. I love it. And uh, a great comment in from um, Angela as well. She, she just actually used a 24 seven nurse line the other night because I thought something was wrong. But it turns out I was fine. But it was reassuring to be able to talk to a nurse about my symptoms. So uh, all about access, right? And exactly. And normally, if you're feeling that way at 11 o'clock p.m., you don't want to leave your house. You're not sure something's wrong. You don't want to sit in that emergency room because urgent cares are typically closed. It is absolutely convenient and such a luxury to be able to contact a healthcare professional. Get your mind at ease, sleep tight, and know that nothing bad is going to happen overnight. Okay. So let, let me ask you uh, specifically in your field, right? Because you talked about some of the things where the disciplines where um, most of it's based around conversation, how it was great. But, um, you know, I think, you know, maybe if you had an eye doctor or eye surgeon, you wouldn't necessarily think, okay, that's something that lends directly to telemedicine, but you actually have a whole business built around it. So how does that work? I do. Thank you for that question, too. Um, I was a little bit ahead of my time in, in knowing that ophthalmology could be something we could do via telemedicine. And that has paid off hugely large dividends 
right now in this pandemic. Um, I spent the first two years of my business trying to convince people that we could do ophthalmology without all of the equipment that we needed, that we were diagnostically able to come up with a sound um, treatment for a person without being in the room with them and having all of our equipment. If any of you have been to an eye doctor recently, you know that we, we have all the toys, all the bills, all the whistles from the time you walk in until the very last portion of your examination. And so we are very equipment dependent. Um, but when it comes down to it, the fundamental skills that we use to make diagnoses are with our eyes. We look at your eyes, we are able to see what's going on, and we listen to them. We're able to put those two come up with good diagnoses at least 95% of the time or greater. The other huge convenience that you will experience with our company is if you have something that we are not able to treat or manage, medicine, we will make your trip to the emergency room as easy as possible by calling ahead, letting them know that you're coming, what we know, what we expect, what we think this might be, and what the next steps would be in your workup. So that is huge for many emergency rooms who may or may not have an ophthalmologist like me on call anyway. I love it. And guys, if you're just joining us again, my name is Lamar Tyler. I'm the creator and founder of Traffic Sales and Profit. And I'm also co-founder of BlackAndMarriedWithKids.com, the world's largest African-American marriage and parenting site with my lovely wife, Ronnie. We are here today with Dr. Anika Goodwin, CEO of Emergency MD. Um, and um, Opulence MD Beauty, and we are talking about telemedicine, the ins and outs of it for doctors and for patients as well. Um, as we begin to shift to what we are seeing, right, is uh, what can be transitioned to the new normal in medicine, right? And a lot of things that are changing, and, and uh, we're seeing it right before our eyes, right? The, the advancement and acceleration of this field of medicine um, happens so quickly as we kind of keep moving. So, Dr. Nika, let me ask you uh, with what I just talked about. What was telemedicine... And you talked about a little bit with your, with your particular business, but in, in all, like, what was um, the adaptation of telemedicine like <laughs> maybe up until just a few weeks ago or a month ago? I'm assuming <laughs> that it's accelerated greatly since then. And, and then also the second part of that question is how do you think things will change? Do you think things will change? Do you think this will be the new normal? Or do you think a lot of people mm -hmm. now, because they have access and they've tried it, you know, will start to shift our relationship in the past to actually going into the doctor's office? So Lamar, as with any tech offering, you're going to have these early adopters, these people who see it and say, oh, that's cool. I want to do it. And then you're going to have these people who are like, you can't take care of patients that way. Those are our later adopters. Sometimes I'm more who are just like, how are you able to do this? Um, the early adopters have proven this concept and they have proven it re without any shadow of a doubt at all that the telemedicine works. And so those early adopters then brought on kind of those middle of the road people who who have started to incorporate it in their practice. So what we're seeing, what we were seeing prior to this pandemic is offices offering follow-up visits. So if your child was sick, your child was diagnosed with um, an upper respiratory infection, then offering you a, a follow-up visit if your child is not better in a certain amount of time, instead of having to go in, because as many of us know, all the sick people are at the doctor's office. I don't want to sit in the waiting room with all these sick people. I don't want to be all around all these little viral viruses, these little youngins. So um, it's much better for the entire family to have that as an option for a follow up. Same thing with same things with surgical visits. So now patients can have surgery instead of having to go out for those first one or two surgery visits. We're able to connect with the patient, find out what's going on and determine if a visit is actually necessary. So that was pre pandemic telemedicine. Now, in this current pandemic with COVID-19 um, wreaking havoc on our society and many doctor's offices being forced to close, unable to see people unless they are acute emergencies, people and offices, doctors have had to find other ways to offer service to their patients. So for even the latest adopters, telemedicine has become a necessity. There are many doctor's offices who right now are having zero revenue days because they're not able to open with normal schedules and yet they still have staff to pay. So the opportunity to offer telemedicine so that patients can continue to get care, doctors can continue to um, keep their offices and their employees working and paid, um, it has been huge. So I'm, I'm thankful that we had those people who adopted early and really made the process what it is now, such that in this pandemic, even those later to adopt have been able to deploy telemedicine fairly quickly. Yeah. And, and just as you get like, so you think like post pandemic, you think we'll be back to business as usual with just like a, a few more people doing telemedicine adopted? Or do you think like, like how, how major of a shift do you think this will be 
because, like I said, of the experience. And and not and it sounds like you not just the experience of the actual patients, but the experience of maybe some medical doctors as well yes. that before really weren't engaging in it, really weren't taking advantage of it. Um, but now, right, have been kind of almost forced into a position that they're doing it and to say, you know what, there's some things we can do and operate outside of the office and maybe there's some additional flexibility. I'm so glad this is being taped because I want everybody listening to mark my words. I've been told I'm a visionary. What I see post pandemic, I see Walmarts, Targets, Walgreens, CVS. I see all of these places that in grocery stores. Let me not, not leave out grocery stores. I see all of these places that are considered essential now adopting some very rudimentary healthcare off offerings. I see kiosks in these places where patients can go. There's a blood pressure monitor there. They can have their blood pressure taken. They can have their temperature checked, pulse checked. Um, and even as far as like my specialty is concerned, they can have their eye pressure checked for our glaucoma patients. We're going to be able to offer this to patients outside of a brick and mortar. I think that that is what this pandemic has set us up for. And that is going to be the expectation now that people know all that can be done via telemedicine. This is awesome. This is awesome. This is such a great conversation. Guys, if you're just joining us again, we're joined here today by Dr. Anika Goodwin, um, CEO of iEmergency MD, and she is breaking down to us the ins and outs of telemedicine for doctors and patients. Um, if you're just joining and you have questions or you've been here for a while and you have questions, do me a favor, drop those questions down into the comments below. I want to make sure we get to as many of your questions as we possibly can. I want to get those answered. Um, also, while we're doing that, um, Dr. Nika, I wanted to make sure um, you share it with them um, where they can contact you, how they can get more information about you or your companies, if they can follow you on social, that type of thing. And then I think we got something special for the people that we can share as well. Absolutely. So um, you can follow me. I am at Dr. Anika, D-R-A-N-I-K-A-M-D on all social media platforms um, for iMergency MD. Please visit us at www iMergency. That is E Y E M E R G E N C Y M D dot com. W Emergency MD dot com. If you are having an acute eye issue, because unfortunately um, our bodies don't take a break just because there's a pandemic, then you're able to go to www Emergency MD dot com um, and follow the links to see a clinician and have your problem treated. All right. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then, guys, also, um, Dr. Nika has been so gracious to um, bless with an amazing resource for you guys. She has created a patient's guide to telemedicine. It gives you a step-by-step -step instructions to have a successful first or 50th telemedicine encounter while we are social distancing to stop the pandemic. Um, and can we give them the, um, the code and the number to text that to? Yes, please. So if you are afraid to use telemedicine, you've never done it before, you're not tech savvy, I have created a guide that you will take you step by step through everything you need, everything you have to do in order to have a successful visit with your doctor. It tells you what devices you can use, what sort of internet connection you will need, um, and what to expect during the visit. And if you would like to get this guide so that you and your family feel prepared for a tele telemedicine visits, if it need, if the need becomes available, um, then vision, V-I-S-I-O-N, vision to 646-495-9867. That is 646-495-9867. Text vision, V-I-S-I-O-N. We will get that um, guidebook out to you so that you will feel empowered to have your very first telemedicine visit because this will be our new normal. All right. I love it, guys. Hopefully you guys are getting all of that information um, and you're getting everything that you need. Like I said, make order to make informed decisions to feel more comfortable with the new normal as we kind of transition in and making sure you're still getting the medical help and getting your questions answered, right? But just being able to adopt to what may be a new way for you to actually handle this, right? If you've been doing, uh, using telemedicine as a patient, I know we got some medical doctors that are probably on as well. would love to hear your comments down below. Um, there we go, Donna Heath Gonzalez. What's going on, Donna? Say she had her doctor visit this morning, uh, right? Um, uh, virtually. Um, there we go. What's up, Crystal? Crystal said, you are a visionary eye doctor. She loves that. Um, <laughs> There we go. Andrea said, now is not a good time to be sick, right? No. 
It is not, unfortunately, but it happens. It happens. And the place you do not want to be right now, if you are sick with something other than very serious signs of COVID is in an emergency department or an urgent care, because that's where the sick people are. So anything, any small thing should be able to be handled via telemedicine. And I want to put this out there. If your doctor's office has not yet adopted telemedicine, if that is not an offering that they have, talk to your doctor about it. Doctors sometimes need to hear their patients say that this is something they want and something they're comfortable with. So speak to your doctor about it and don't feel stuck. There are other widely available platforms so that you can see a doctor if your primary care doctor, your personal provider is not offering telemedicine. Those are things like MD Live, American Well, Doctor on Demand. You can Google any of those and you will be able to see a practitioner within minutes. Very good, very good. Okay, Dr. Nika, um, so before we wrap, um, any last uh, comments you wanna make? Um, any any you know final words about this topic or any way you wanna encourage the audience towards uh, getting their hands on and finally beginning to use telemedicine? Sometimes it takes things like this to kind of push us forward. Um, and I can tell you from the perspective of a business owner, um, I was very frustrated prior to this pandemic. It felt like my personal and telemedicine wasn't taking off. Um, But it's amazing how quickly people's perspectives change. Um, Necessity is the mother of of invention. Um, And so now we are all trying to come up with new ways to navigate during this pandemic. And I think that afterwards, we're all going to be better for it. Um, So if you are a business owner, if you've been a little bit frustrated, if you've been a little bit impatient, your time will come. Persevere. Keep plugging. Your time will come. There we go. I love it. I love it. I love it. Like one of my favorite sayings is, uh, what, stay ready so you don't have to get ready, right? That's um, right. That's yeah, right. Tanika, I, think, I think by the time all this is done, um, you'll be a, a great case study for that. Like stay ready, get in position, line everything up, yes. have, have your ducks in a row ready to move. Because when the opportunity comes, you have to be ready. Ready. <laughs> all right. Again, so thank you so much for joining us, everybody. We want to encourage you, you um, to send that text message off. We shared in the chat. It is texting uh, vision to 646-495-9867. Also make sure you follow um, Dr. Nico on all the platforms and you visit the website, uh, iemergencymd.com. We share that as well. Um, and Dr. Nika, thank you again for just taking the time to come and educate the people to hopefully uh, make them feel more comfortable with using telemedicine and get them started in that direction so that they can get the help and the answers they need while they may not be able to get into the actual doctor's office. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Lamar. Be safe, everyone. You're welcome. All right, guys, uh, we will see you tomorrow. We're back tomorrow with another amazing interview, more insight to help you during these tough times, right? Tough times personally on a family level, a business level, and definitely an economic level. We're here to support you. We do not want to leave anyone behind in our community, and we're going to make sure we do that by giving you the best resources, experts, information, and expertise. My name is Lamar Tyler, creator and founder of Traffic Sales and Profit, co-founder of BlackAndMarriedWithKids.com with my wife, Ronnie, and we will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.